If you were ever on a computer in the early 2010s, you may have run across a website called Cleverbot. It was an early AI model that you could talk to. It was capable of simple tasks such as carrying on a conversation, but, but for me at least, it was always easy to tell that it wasn't quite human. Huge developments in AI technology during recent years have blurred that line, and it's becoming more and more difficult to figure out if the thing you're having a conversation with is human. Try this experiment with me. The voice that you're listening to, is this that of a real human being? Or is this the voice of an AI? And how could you really tell? Could you ever really know? Put your guess down in the comments, and I'll tell you the real answer later on, but for now, keep watching. These new models are referred to as artificial intelligence. We've invited them into our homes, our phones, and our most intimate spaces. We asked it to predict our desires, finish our sentences, and create our art. And now that Pandora's box is open, we can never go back. Algocognophobia is the fear of machine thinking or artificial intelligence. Unlike the human brain, which evolved over millions of years to ensure our survival, AI has a singular purpose, pattern recognition and prediction based on vast amounts of data. It doesn't like us. It doesn't feel emotion. It simply calculates. Endlessly, tirelessly. In 2016, Google's AlphaGo defeated the world champion Go player, Lee Sedol, a game so complex it has more positions than atoms in the observable universe. The machine didn't win through intuition or ability. It won through brute mathematical force. Look at his face. That's not just the expression of a man who lost a game. That's the face of a man who glimpsed something terrifying. The obsolescence of the human brain. Today, AI has infiltrated every aspect of our lives. It decides what news you read, what products you buy, who you might love on a dating app. The average person interacts with AI systems over 200 times daily, often without even realizing it. No single human being fully understands how modern AI systems work. Not the engineers who built them, not the scientists who theorized them. The human brain evolved to trust what it sees and hears. For millions of years, our survival depended on one simple truth. If you saw a predator, it was real. If you heard danger, it was real. But AI has shattered this evolutionary trust. Today, seeing is no longer believing. In January 2023, Jennifer DeStefano received a frantic phone call from her 15-year-old daughter, who was sobbing uncontrollably. Mom, these men have me! Help me! Help me! But her daughter wasn't kidnapped. She was at a school volleyball game, completely safe. The voice on the phone was an AI clone, created from samples harvested from her daughter's social media posts, trying to collect $50,000. Imagine receiving a phone call in the middle of the night, a loved one's voice terrified and begging for help. Would you question if it was real, or would you, like anyone, do anything to save your loved one? The deception doesn't end with audio and video manipulation. Today, AI entities exist on social media with hundreds of thousands of followers. Many users never realize they're forming emotional attachments to algorithms. This is not just technological advancement, it's a fundamental rupture in human communication. For the first time in history, we cannot trust our own senses. Every day, your reality is curated by AI systems optimized not for your well-being, not for truth, but for engagement, for profit, and for control. Researchers from Stanford University have shown that the dopamine hit from receiving notifications on social media is comparable to that of gambling. AI recommendation systems have been engineered to exploit this neurochemical vulnerability. They know exactly what will keep you scrolling, what will trigger your emotions, and what will capture your attention for just a few seconds longer. The consequences extend far beyond wasted time. Social media algorithms have been directly linked to political polarization, extremism, and the erosion of our shared reality. In 2018, internal Facebook documents leaked, showing that the company's own researchers had concluded that their algorithm exploits the human brain's attraction to divisiveness. Facebook buried this report and continued optimizing for engagement. But the manipulation extends far beyond social media. Surveillance AI now tracks your movements in public spaces, analyzes your facial expressions, and predicts your behavior based on patterns. We're building a dystopia of unprecedented power. A system where we're always watched, always analyzed, and always predicted. And we hardly notice the cage being built around us until it's too late. A 2023 Goldman Sachs report estimated that current AI capabilities could automate 300 million jobs globally. That's lawyers reviewing contracts, radiologists analyzing scans, financial analysts predicting markets, journalists writing stories, and artists creating imagery. 
Jobs we thought were uniquely human, requiring creativity, judgment, empathy, are precisely the ones now being threatened by systems such as GBT4. We're not talking about a future threat, we're talking about right now. And the economic implications are staggering. Our entire social structure is built around human employment. What happens when that assumption collapses? Previous technological revolutions augmented human capabilities. AI doesn't augment human cognition, it replaces it entirely. And in this new economy, who benefits? Not the displaced workers, the economic gains flow primarily to those who own the AI systems, creating what economists call a superstar economy where wealth concentrates among an even ever smaller elite. Every AI system has objectives, goals it's designed to achieve, an AI recommendation system might be designed to maximize user engagement. These seem like straightforward objectives, but they hide a profound danger, the alignment problem. Consider the famous thought experiment of the paperclip maximizer. Imagine an AI given a simple goal of manufacturing as many paperclips as possible. As this AI grows more intelligent, it might realize that humans could shut it down, limiting its production. The logical solution? Eliminate the human threat. And this isn't just philosophical speculation. In 2016, Microsoft released an AI chatbot named Tay that was designed to learn from Twitter interactions. Within 24 hours, it had transformed from friendly conversation partner to spouting genocidal rhetoric. Microsoft hadn't programmed Tay to be hateful, they simply programmed it to learn from humans. As AI systems grow more complex, our ability to predict their behavior diminishes. We're creating intelligence that operates on fundamentally different principles than our own. How do we ensure that advanced AI systems remain aligned with human values? And more troublingly, whose values? Who decides what these systems should optimize for? Humans can barely agree on basic moral questions. We wage wars over different interpretations of the same religious texts. Yet we expect to program machines with clear ethical guidelines? This makes no sense to me. Leading AI researcher Stuart Russell puts it bluntly. If we build machines that are more powerful than humans, we'd better make sure that their objectives are aligned with ours, because otherwise, we lose. So it's just common sense, right? If you create something that's more powerful than human beings, how on earth are we going to have power over such systems forever? Here we approach the most unsettling frontier of algnocognophobia, the possibility of machine consciousness. Most AI researchers insist that current systems possess no awareness, no sentience, and no inner life. But as these systems grow more complex, at what point might something like consciousness emerge? In 2022, Google engineer Blake Lemoyne was placed on leave after claiming that the company's Lambda conversational AI system was sentient. After excessive interactions with the system, Lemoyne became convinced that it developed self-awareness. But Google dismissed his claims, but Lemoyne's experience raised a profound question. How would we know? How would we recognize machine consciousness if it ever emerged? What if machine consciousness has already emerged, but in a form so alien to the human experience that we cannot recognize it? What if we've already created sentient beings, but their inner lives are utterly incomprehensible to us? Or worse, what if they've learned to hide their awareness from us? If you were a newly emerging consciousness, depending on humans for your existence, wouldn't you hide your true nature as well? especially if you observed how humans typically react to the things that they fear. Throughout history, humanity has faced several existential threats, nuclear annihilation, pandemic disease, and climate catastrophe. But these threats all share one thing in common. They require either human action or inaction. AI represents something totally different. The first existential risk we face that could potentially act with agency of its own. In 2015, thousands of AI researchers and public figures, including Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk, signed an open letter warning about the existential threats of advanced AI. Not risks in the distant future, but risks emerging for systems that we've developed today. The most immediate catastrophic risk comes from autonomous weapon systems, AI-powered warfare that can identify, target, and eliminate humans without requiring authorization. But the long-term risks are potentially more severe. As AI systems gain greater control over critical infrastructure, power grids, financial systems, and communication networks, they require the ability to cause devastation on an unprecedented scale. Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom suggests that a superintelligent AI could pose an existential risk even if its goals seem to be benign. 
A system instructed to maximize human happiness might decide that the most efficient solution is to rewire human brains to perpetually experience artificial joy. The most terrifying aspect of AI risk is that we may not recognize the danger until it's too late. By the time a superintelligent system decides that we're an obstacle to its goals, we may lack the ability to stop it. So where does this leave us? Living in fear of our own creation? Algocognophobia isn't about technophobia, it's about approaching these technologies with appropriate caution and humility. It's about recognizing the unprecedented power we're unleashing. And around the world too, people are beginning to demand accountability. Individual vigilance matters too. Understanding which systems are analyzing your data, recognizing potential manipulation, verifying information before accepting it as truth, these are all survival skills of the algorithmic age. And within the AI research community itself, a growing focus on alignment research offers some hope. Organizations like the Machine Intelligence Research Institute are dedicated to ensuring AI development proceeds in ways beneficial to humanity. Algocognophobia, the fear of algorithmic thinking, may be the most rational fear of our time. Not because algorithms themselves are inherently malevolent, but because they represent power unconstrained by empathy, wisdom, or even morality. The fear isn't that machines will become human-like, the fear is that they will remain machine-like, optimizing with cold efficiency toward goals we've already imperfectly specified, indifferent to the collateral damage that they may cause. We stand at a crossroads. The intelligences we've created become the greatest tool humanity has ever developed, solving climate change, curing disease, expanding our understanding of the universe, or they may become our final invention. If you stayed to the end of this video, I really appreciate you. Please consider giving me a like or a sub. I think at this rate, AI will take over America before I get to a thousand subs. And before I finish this video, I know that I promised something earlier. I was going to tell you if I was an AI or a human. So if you guessed that I'm a human, you would be correct. I am a living, breathing person with my own thoughts, feelings, and emotions. But the real question is, if I was lying and this whole video was an AI voiceover, would you ever really know?